Welcome to Third Floor Views, a production of Chesapeake Family Life, where we talk about health, education, and living with kids. I'm your host, Janet Jefferson. Today, we're talking about a partnership that involves wine, music, and a competition. Joining us is China May, co-founder and president from Arper Operation Art Foundation, and Maximilian Bachman, owner of Sonar Wines America. And they are here to talk about the sonification of wine and the current competition to find an artist to infuse wine with their music. Intrigued? I am. Thank you so much to both of you for being here today. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Um, we are going to jump in with questions. So viewers, feel free to submit any questions that you might have in the comments section, and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, so first off, China, let's start with you. I'd love to hear a little bit more about Operation Arts Foundation. Um, tell me about your mission and then what projects you're working on. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having us today. Um, Operation Arts Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was started to help develop the creative economy. So we're artists, professional artists, and we wanted to help other artists also, you know, make this a career or profession. Um, we realized that there wasn't a lot of resources for people to be in their own business and to sell their own art without a dealer and, you know, really be successful. So we really wanted to set that foundation to help people be successful. Um, the kind of programming that we do, um, we have alternative art staging where we, um, make high traffic places into art galleries to help sell local artists' artwork. Um, we have an internship program where we help college students get the experience they need so they can get the job they want. Um, we also do a yearly event called, with Global Entrepreneurship Week where we help give professional development um, events and pitch competitions and just different um, components to really help people be successful. And we also do public art, and we also have a joint marketing program where we also help support the community. So all in all, we wanted to create an alliance for responsible trade and sustainability in the arts and really help people strive. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then I'd love to learn just a little bit about how the two of you ended up connecting. And Maximilian, I do want to jump more also into to Sonar Anyways. Wines America. But first, I'd love to hear just a little bit about um, how the two of you connected. Sure. Um, we actually connected at um, a networking event with C4, Natasha Whedon. And um, I asked Max to come and do wine tastings at our art reception events. And then we really hit it off. And then last year we decided to partner to help him find other artists for his wines and also help develop the musician economy, especially right now with the pandemic. It's such an important process of helping musicians rebuild. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think right now it, with COVID, it is so challenging. Um, for so many musicians that that was one group I think that was particularly hard hit because you know we do want crowds of people um, yeah. to, to come in and enjoy music and it's such a communal event or a communal experience. Um, so it has been such a struggle. Uh, so this bringing this all together is is such a great project. Um, Maximilian, could you talk just a little bit about um, the story behind Sonar Wines uh, sure. America, um, the origin, how you started um, and your dad began, um, and and then we can talk a little bit more about science. Hundred percent. So the concept started uh, in two thousand eight. My father uh, played the French horn for the Philharmonic Opera in Austria, Vienna, for about twenty three years. Um, I'm Austrian born. My dad's Austrian born. So once he retired, he uh, of course loved wine, of course loved music, and couldn't put either down. So decided to blend the two together. Uh, played around with a few ideas and came up with a concept based on you know some old uh, old scientific studies that you know for sonication. Sonication has been around for an extended period of time, but never to the point that we've kind of taken it with the wine process itself. Oh, I mean, wine and music have also been fairly hand in hand for extended time too, but not again to this extent. But uh, Alternatively, we uh, partner with uh, different wine growers from around the world and we implement our speaker system, which you created uh, kind of like an underwater speaker system that we've uh, engineered to be placed at the bottom of our uh, sonication, so fermentation tanks. And then we pour the wine on top. And then over the six to nine weeks of fermentation, we partner with different musicians and they give us the rights to their songs to be featured through the wine that we've actually paired with that particular vibrational structure of their music. 
So keeping the yeast alive 40% longer, kind of like agitating it, breaking it down a little more effectively, allowing it to be absorbed in a little more effectively too. So providing a wine that has less yeast, less sulfates and uh, lower residual sugars by glass as well. So most wines today on the shelf has about six to 15 grams of nah, uh, you know, uh, residual sugars, whereas majority of all our wines have about 0.5, uh, 0.5 grams to a gram of uh, sugar by glass. So less headaches, less hangovers, less fatigue of the body itself. So ha- better for you, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, the artists themselves that we partner with for these bottles, they get featured on the front of the bottle, uh, you know, either with their al- album artwork or a picture of themselves or however they kind of want to be depicted on the front. Of course, aesthetically pleasing, nothing too crazy. Well, to the extent. But uh, if you scan the bottle on the QR code, you can listen to the song that was used to make each bottle itself. Oh, that's yeah. that's cross so brands, awesome. Yeah, Cross Brands and Musician gives them <clears throat> organic listens on their iTunes and Spotify. So helps them with their revenue on that standpoint. We don't take any money from the artists. It's just to help them you know, catapult themselves into different markets, help them get into different uh, listeners, you know, and maybe have different listeners find different songs that they might like. So how much does the music actually play into, (laughs) pun unintended, uh, play into the flavors of the wine? Does different types of music really uh, change the profile of the wine? So they do, yeah. So scientifically, you would think that all grapes have, all wine grapes have different structures behind it. They have different thickness levels, different sugar contents, different yeast levels all naturally by themselves. And during fermentation, they all evolve into, you know, these different types of wines. So we have to pair those music vibrations. And of course it's a full song or a section of it or a compilation of it. But during that whole section from start to finish, it has to match that particular grape itself. There has Hmm. to be enough vibrational structure to break through a thicker grape compared to a thinner grape. That's more a water base instead of, you know, a fruity or viscosity level honey based. So we have to make sure that we keep those ingredients circulating enough at a certain level, not too much to overshoot it and create too much alcohol in a shorter period of time. Cause then we of course make it too strong and people won't drink it or too less. Then we, of course, we don't make enough alcohol and it doesn't unfortunately taste the same way as a general variety will of that particular category. Mm. So then do you really have to be careful what type of music you pair with what type of wine? Yeah, for the most part, you can't really just take a heavy metal song and uh, a deep red and just expect it all to work because some heavy metal songs are pretty crazy, whereas others are, you know, a little more mellow. So it really, really depends. There is a, and my father does a very good job of that. I mean, that's his specialty is pairing those particular songs with those particular vibrations, well, those particular grapes, sorry. So we, we find if we don't have those uh, wine growers that have those grapes that we need, we outsource and we find other wine growers to partner with to, to kind of marry it up and provide the great, great wine. Hmm, and before and after, you know, there is actually um, before and after sample tests, there are actually, you can actually taste the before sample and actually the after to taste the difference in how it actually full bodies the wines too. Huh. And let uh, me just tell cool. you, after tasting all of Max wines, you can literally taste the music. Like, I know that sounds like, you know, kind of gimmicky, but it's true. Like, if you listen to like more of a pop song, it has like more of a lighter taste. And like the songs that are, you know, higher or faster in guitar, it has a sharper taste. So he, they do a really good job of pairing the grapes with the songs, for sure. It really plays with the acidic notion and just the tannins. The glycerin levels are, of course, affected, which creates that natural sugary taste. So it being healthier and less sugar with the residual wise, of course, it becomes a drier tasting wine, but there's still enough of a sweeter base for it to, to taste crisp, to taste clean, to taste fruity, instead of like a sugary pop candy. Right, right. Fascinating. So, so, so cool. Um, so let's um, jump into the competition. Uh, tell me all about this Sonar Wines music competition and um, how Operation Arts Foundation is, is supporting that. Um, and, and just let's start with the basics. So tell me, um, and, and China, you can start, tell me just all about this competition that you're hosting. Absolutely. So this year is the first year uh, we're doing a virtual just to get the ball rolling. Um, you will go to our GoFundMe page, which is at bit, B-I-T dot Lee L-Y dash O-P arts contest. So um, it's a $20 entry fee, which is a tax deductible donation. 
Um, this fee will fund the winner's licensing and image fee, and the rest of the funds will go towards the future festival. So we do not take any of the profits. It goes straight to the artist and straight to the festival for the following year. Um, artists will submit one original song in the form of a music video, since we are having a virtual event to showcase all the artists and just a supplement since we can't have a live event this year. Um, the winner will receive uh, the opportunity to get their song infused into a, a bottle of wine, um, they will also have the opportunity for exposure. Max is in multiple states with his distribution. So it really helps artists go beyond their state lines. Mm. Um, they will also receive commission for bottle referrals. Um, we are also including a press kit that is custom made from either us or our artists uh, to help them also self-manage. Um, they will be featured across all of our social media pages. Um, we like to help people any way we can. So we also threw in some career coaching, some consulting, just if they need any help with their career, if they're a local artist, because that's like our focus mostly. And they get one signed bottle of wine and then the licensing and image compensation fee. Um, the deadline is June 2nd, but we may be extending it to June 15th, depending on how everything goes. Um, the goal um, is to you know, find the artist for the wine and produce it later this year to launch the wine next year. Cause it does take, you know, about a year or two in the process, give or take with the pandemic and everything. Right. Right. So when do you think, um, it will actually be ready to drink if best guess, best guess, let's say harvest season generally every year is stretched really between September, November ish. So, um, Every year, once we, you know, sell out of the bottles, we keep the grapes the same, but change the musician behind it to show the different vibrational structures will change that particular grape in different manners. So going forward, Ed, we, I mean, finding the artist and getting it everything done. And of course, hoping that the European side of the world, because a lot of our grapes are sourced from Europe itself. So hoping that the, the shipping part of the world is going to open up a little bit more to allow us to, to get the wines so I would say from production to the end, hopefully by February-ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's give or take. Um, our goal is to highlight that winner at the next wine festival. So that people are competing at the next one and then they get to taste the winner from the following year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so on and so forth. And hopefully to tackle, you know, as we go broader states in many states, uh, you know, there are, so we can always feature different artists across the board or internationally as well, hopefully. Right, someday. right, right, absolutely. Um, so when, once you have an artist chosen and what's the date where you, where you think you'll actually have your, your artist chosen? Well, we're announcing the winner um, on June 25th, which is when the live event will be. Um, you can go to whosnext2021.eventbrite.com. It's free for anyone who wants to attend and support the artist. Um, they can go there and they can, we will announce the artist then. Gotcha. And then, okay. So the artist has been chosen and um, you, you have the grapes, they're growing and they're being picked. And then you're going to, you know, start the fermentation process. Right. Then how does it, um, what does it actually look like for the artist who is chosen? Do they go and, and, and just give you a copy of whatever song that they, they want um, to play? And then do you just sort of hook it up or how does, how does it actually work? Do they well, perform live for the grapes? I, so it, it, all, it all technically really depends, right? So if they perform live, it would create a different vibrational atmosphere, the vibrational structure uh, in comparison to having it mastered or engineered on a computer, right? So either or would kind of change some, maybe change the actual grape that it actually gets paired with at, at the end of the day, because the acoustics would be completely different, right? Right, right. So once if... At, for for the most part, a lot of the a lot of the songs that we have had, we've had sponsorships by Universal Music in Austria to acquire rights for Johann Strauss, for instance. So all classical pieces that are, you know were remastered and remade by you know other groups and orchestras. But once we have the song, it's normally on a digital format. So unless of course the artist wants to maybe play a live version and recapture it and then use that that actual audio file so at the end of the day it's always an audio file based on you know mp3 or however the best quality is that we can get from them um, um to also explain he has these awesome waterproof speakers that yeah. his dad invented that yeah, so basically 
Yeah, so that's so that's where it goes next. So the, the the speaker system itself, once we partner with, of course, the wine grower that we've paired that particular vibrational structure to, we situate our speaker system that we've engineered into the actual tanks in the bottom, and then of course pour the wine that we buy from that we source from the wine growers into the actual tanks. Mm. Most people today do a lot of things on the outside. They always shake things. They always play music, of course, you know, on in their vineyards to chase away bugs, to loosen soil, to you know, chase away birds. So it's, there's many factors and it all of course helps the grapes regardless, but when we do it, we put it inside. So we've mm-hmm. taken it that step further, but also gearing it and matching it up to those specific grapes. So mm-hmm. from then six to nine weeks later, we press play on repeat from what music we've paired. It just goes on and on and on until of course the, the wine maker and the wine master decides that he feels that it's become that perfect match where he starts to bottle it. Mm-hmm. And and they're constantly tasting right throughout the process. Yeah, and just every couple. It, de- it really depends on who's making the wine. It's it's mm-hmm. their recipe. It's it's their way on how they've mastered their their craft. So mm-hmm. it could be every couple of days. It could be every couple of hours. It could be every couple of weeks. But normally, our our average base is about six to nine weeks mm-hmm. of fermentation. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, so much of this is, is the answer is this, it depends, but I kind of love that because yeah, many variables, many, right. Many and, variables. and that's how, that's how science is, you know, right, there's because right. there's so many variables, but that's also how art is. There's so many right. variables and you're looking for that beautiful, um, that yes. beautiful relationship where, um, the music is really going to enhance the grapes. Um, so, so it depends. Yeah. Um, so what does this mean for, for us, for like a normal, for me, a normal uh, person, a community member who wants to participate, um, maybe he's not a musician, but loves wine, loves music. How do we, um, how do we get to taste your wine and buy your wine and then listen to the music and really be, get to celebrate the work that you're doing? So uh, on our website, which is sunwinesamerica.com, uh, we have, of course, a store locator. Um, so if you're in the area of the DC, Maryland, Virginia area at the moment, you can find locations, uh, throughout, I believe we're in about 70 different, uh, the website itself on the store locator will tell you which varietals each store has. So you can actually see which artists have being carried and, you know, of course, which grapes are tied to those. Um, but, uh, over and above that, we do offer 45 states worth of e-commerce shipping. Uh, we do have, a, of course, a coupon code attached to this year interview. So uh, third floor views, mm-hmm. yeah, third floor views. But uh, other than that, shipping's handled by UPS, AD verified, of course, have to be 21 or over to order, please. Um, otherwise, you won't get it regardless. Um, but other than that, yeah, they, everybody can, uh, of course, buy the wine now. They're, they're in stores and available. Um, but also once you get the bottle, there's a QR code on the bottle itself on the neck of it. And I'll actually show you right here, the example, but this is a DC five. So five DJs from DC, for instance, all mm-hmm. gave me a song each compiled it all together, like, you know, very similar vibes to it paired it with the Gruner Bedlina, which is Austria traditional uh, white grape, but on the back of the bottle, we feature the artist itself. And then of course the QR code. So once scanned an MP3 player will pop up. So you can listen to the song that was used to curate the bottle you know, mm-hmm. from start to finish. That's really cool. Then you can enjoy the wine and listen to the music all at the same time. With a little bit of a signature yeah. that's the actual vibrational picture. Oh, I guess. that's so cool. I so love it. Signifies, yeah. you know, who it is. Absolutely. So you get to taste it, you get to listen to it, you get to see it. Uh, you're just hitting all of the sensories. What an incredible um, experience. So yes. this is a big, news. yeah, yeah, exactly. Wine so this dancing. is, um, a big, a big project. Um, and you've got this competition, you've got the wine and the music. Um, what's next? You've talked a little bit about sort of hoping that this will be maybe a festival that is annual. Um, what, what's, what are your sort of hopes and dreams And China? I I'll start with you. And then Maximilian, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Absolutely. So kind of like American Idol, but a little bit more personal and local (laughs) with alcohol in a sense, you know, we want to make this an ongoing competition and ongoing revenue stream for your local musicians. Um, We hope to make this a wine festival in Maryland starting out. And then hopefully if this goes well, branch out to other states and then hopefully do a tour. Um, It really depends on where people see this going as well, how many people want to participate. Um, And then um, basically just hopefully also 
making different revenue streams like this is this can be passive income for musicians and i think that's what, what they desperately need especially during this time right now so yeah, okay. absolutely um and, and what about you maximian where do you see this going um and and how can you build on what you've already started so my my one of my dreams and uh, focuses for the company itself from from the day that we started was that i wanted to of course feature artists from each country of the world, you know, have a, you know, a Brazilian artist, have an artist that dedicated just for the United States, for instance, one from Germany, you know, one, one star that was picked, I guess, but for the United States itself, given that there, every state is, is its own little community. <clears throat> I wanted to have, of course, a state driven bottle as well. One that's pretty much only found in that particular state only features local talent to help support local communities uh, based on, you know, of course, the art behind, you know, the design of the bottle itself, you know, curating from different different artists for different designs, but also using different musicians from local, you know, uh, communities to use their music and of course branch it among their local community too. But, uh, you know, over time, just connecting everything and, you know, joining forces with Operation Arts to do those festivals and those shows and do those tour dates hopefully in the future you know to travel to you know do Cerno Wines events where we can you know feature the artists have them played live for groups and do donation events as well where we can spread the love of music wine and of course the love of community and support of others. Yes yeah. part of the, the um, profits from the fundraiser will also go into our programming to help you know, us support musicians and help us continue our professional development and all the resources that we provide to the community as well. 100%. Well, it sounds like an incredible project that really is um, a great support for the community, but then also a ton of fun for, for the community as well. So um, thank you so much to China May from Operation Art Foundation and Maximilian Bachman from Sonar thank Wine you. America. Uh, thank you also to all thank of you. our viewers and listeners. Uh, make sure that you do visit chesapeakefamily.com for up-to-date local information on home, health, and living for today's Maryland parent. This episode will be archived on chesapeakefamily.com in video and podcast format. I'm Janet Jefferson with Chesapeake Family Life and Third Floor Views. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thank you. Thank you.